Welcome to the Select Board, Board of Health, Sewer Commissioners meeting of October 18th, 2023 at 6 p.m. here in, in the main meeting room. It's a hybrid Zoom and in person at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems uh, interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any spe specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. Um, so I'm calling the meeting to order at 6 p.m. The we're, We have public comment. Is there any public comment? I don't see any. Um, First scheduled hearing, um, I think what we're going to do is have um, Mark Brennan from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee come right up. All right. Well, the tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, typically tries to meet before um, town meeting and with us having a special town meeting coming up. We had four capital requests that came in. Um, prior to this special town meeting. Um, the Capital Improvement um, Capital Improvements Planning Committee is a committee that's made up of uh, people from various boards. So we have representation from the Select Board, the Board of Assessors, uh, the Deerfield School Committee, the Finance Committee, and uh, two moderator appointments um, at large. Um, we met and um, not only reviewed each of these capital requests, but for the past few years now, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee has also been assigning priorities to these. So in the packet that you have in front of you, um, on the bottom of page three, I'd like to direct your attention there uh, first before we dive into this. Um, we have um, five different priority levels. So the first is uh, our, our um, pre-approved or pre-funded projects uh, from there. Uh, so that's priority one. Uh, number two is uh, safety and health. Number three is uh, projects of operational importance or preventing further damage to existing capital assets. Uh, number four is proactive priorities and number five is others. So each one of these requests that come in are uh, related to some sort of capital improvement or the engineering of a capital improvement, um, either of which that um, cost $10,000 or more. So for the requests that came in, I would, I'd like to um, go through each one of these and answer any questions you may have. So um, on, on the first sheet that you have there, um, we have our uh, first request. So this is the MVP action grant. Uh, we've actually gone through this MVP grant uh, multiple times, but um, what this uh, current request is for is uh, the um, town's portion of $92,175.85. So um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, voted to recommend uh, this grant. And uh, because there are grant funds, uh, we um, voted to give this a, a priority one. Um, any questions on the MVP grant? I think you you all would should be very intimately <laughs> anyway. So okay, great. Um, the uh, the the next one is the police HVAC design. Um, this one we've also voted several times. We had to review this request again because the cost had escalated from one hundred thousand to uh, two hundred fifty thousand. Um, this one we also gave a priority one. There's multiple factors here. This one is something that was pre-approved, but it, it's also a health and safety issue. So. Um, this, uh, these HVAC um, uh, requests from the police department are for the area of the um, police station where, um, among mm -hmm. other areas, um, people in our holding cells um, uh, are, are serviced by this. So it is something that um, 
the the committee had recommended highly at, at a priority one. Moving on to page two, um, we have the various road repairs. Uh, so these um, this request came in uh, for five million. Uh, we we currently have um, about four point seven million in uh, projects that have either uh, had you know rolled in as of um, the sixteenth of October or are anticipated to roll in shortly, um, and um, this is uh, something that uh, the finance committee has also reviewed and approved, and we are looking to do uh, borrowing on. Uh, so um, that was the, uh, the the next one, and this one also is a priority one. We gave it a priority one because we've already kind of paid for it. You know, the whole purpose of the borrowing and everything for this is to um, assist with cash flow. You know, we're we're already we're already starting to pay for these, so um, we thought that priority one was the most appropriate priority. Then finally, we have the senior housing. Um, this is the the purchase of the um, St. James uh, property. Uh, so this would be coming out of CPA funds. Um, we again gave this one priority one because uh, this has uh, an existing funding source and um, the uh, cost associated with this would be funded out of the CPA funds. And then we also uh, met with um, Lily Dwight to talk about that and asked about you know any other incidentals that will uh, incur as of right now it looks like uh, any any other costs beyond this um, uh, this purchase would would be uh, borne by the developers uh, so um, for, for that reason you know we, we think that priority one would be appropriate so this one was also recommended by the by the committee thank you mark does thank you. trevor or tim do you have any questions I just wanted to understand on the first page um, in the public works area. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure FY 2024 requests. So we're, we're actually talking about additional requests, right? Yeah. yeah so okay. um, this plan here has um, basically the, the next um, uh, both the, the, the 2024 requests that were already voted on ahead of the uh, annual town meeting earlier this year. Um, it also has some anticipated uh, projects, um, but uh, what we're talking about here are four projects that uh, came up um, to the committee after the annual town meeting yeah, earlier okay. this, this year. Yeah, the, the only reason I was asking, I was trying to remember in the back recesses of my mind about this Freightliner truck and, mm -hmm. and ARPA funding. Yes, and, uh, we paid for that. Yep, it's here already. Yep. Yeah, because it's a big yellow truck that I think I loaded. Mm -hmm stuff into think you did <laughs> yes. all right yeah thank you you're already yep. using it yeah put it to good use for you know yep. hauling, hauling out church cushions <laughs> okay well thank you mark thank you um Appreciate casey do we um i can't remember do we officially have to vote the acceptance of it is this i like would okay um then i would like to make a motion that we um accept the recommendation from the ci PC. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Um, so accepting doesn't necessarily mean that we agree, or I'm just trying to clarify the word accept. Well, uh, their recommendation, they prioritized everything as yep. priority one, and, and they recommended everything. And I agree so, with all of it. I'm just trying to, you know, yeah, play. Yeah, that does. Yeah. Yes. That so, does. Uh, you know, it's not like um, we're saying, um, <clears throat> I, I, well, I approve receiving this report from Capital. It's um, yeah. well. Should I rephrase? No, it? I'm okay I... with it. I'm just. Okay. It, it, it means I'm trying to drag this it, meeting out. <laughs> it does mean that we uh, we accept their recommendations and we uh, would forward these on to town meeting uh, for, right. for appropriation. Right, we're agreeing. We're okay. agreeing with that. All right. Yeah, so. um, we're. I, I guess. How about I um, amend my re um, motion to accept and 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 agree with the. Um, endorse endorse the recommendations of the finding of the cipc i'll second that again okay, okay. <laughs> all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel okay. aye carolyn nessa okay great thank you mark Thanks, i appreciate mark. Welcome. you racing here from thank work. you all. thank you mark um you. carolyn can i ask a quick question while before mark rocks out the door don't leave sure. yet 
I would like to put the CIPC recommendations in the guide. Oh, that's fine. It will help people understand that we went through the process. Sure. Yes. And that's fine. I think that's a good idea. That's good with you. Okay. That's good with me. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks, Mark. Yep. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good night. Um, we have a couple minutes uh, before the hearing on the sewer, ra sewer rates. Yeah. Um, do you, does anybody, we don't have minutes, do we, Casey? I didn't see. No, any. we don't. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. That's okay. Um, I, Did you want to confirm the votes from the emergency meeting on Monday or confirm oh, yes. the discussion? Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, so the discussion, as I heard it, was explanation about the $5 million borrowing with finance committee. Essentially, the board explained the nuances of that borrowing and what the plans were. Am I wrong? Because what I'd like to be able to do is just outline what your conversation was. No, that is correct. Okay. I mean, that was my intention. I wasn't here Mondays, right? No, you were. I think it was one no. of the No, Tim was I there. Tim was here. Tim. Yeah, Tim okay, was there. Okay, there. But I was there. Is there anything I'm missing, Tim? <laughs> Do I remember what I did on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting my finance committee meetings up, uh, mixed up. Yeah, Tim was there the, on Monday, and then the Tuesday one. Yep, I was there was for Trevor. Tuesday. Trevor yep. was, yeah, yep. No, I think we, I think that's correct. Okay, uh, because when we do the outline of the minutes, I just want to make sure I didn't recall any votes. I recall the conversation about right. roads. Um, emergency spending and the need for all of this. Right, we, did, right. we didn't take it, any it votes. Was, it was it was just explanation. Okay. Answering questions. Thank you. Yeah. I'll shut up now. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um. Okay. So. A couple minutes. A couple minutes. Any other select board? Uh, maybe I'll just mention. Uh, I want to thank Tim and Carolyn and. Town nurse for going over to the church. Oh, well, you too. And yeah, I went over yesterday afternoon and I took a little bit extra. I'm a bit of a hoarder too. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but I just uh, we, Tim Tim had asked it if you know just have my eyes go on it, see if there's anything. I pulled a, um some stuff over and reorganized the shelving. Oh, thank so you. Because I've actually done that. You know, stuff is there. There's some things that I think um, we'll probably throw away that are on that shelf, but I just, I knew that they were going to get started pretty quick. So I just thought I'd grab what I wasn't sure about. There were a few cots I put up above and a couple of things like that, but I think most of the stuff had been gone through. It looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't move those, uh, white things. I, I know there's one that's broken. We'll toss, but there's several of them we should hang on to. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, uh, Kevin was gonna, uh, or Chris Miller was going to come over and put them in the trailer for the 27th. Oh, okay. October 27th. Yeah, there might be a second one broken too. And yeah, whatever those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got a lot of needles. Yes. Oh man. There was a ton, ton of those. Um, so we, we saved what was good still. And I yeah. think the rest got, got tossed. Yeah, after we get done with throwing them out, I, I, I moved yeah. the rest of the bo boxes over and those shelves are filling up pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yep. It's looking, looking pretty good. Um, so it's exciting to see that thing starting to take shape. There is a box that, or two boxes actually, I think of printer paper. Yeah, I saw it. And that. Uh, use it up. yeah, so um, Cindy Majewski labeled it for town offices and okay, just get to get um, somebody to go over and bring it over to the bring it back. town offices. Yeah, 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 it's good, good copier paper. Yeah, just remember though that that was paid by grant money. So when we it need was. a copier, uh, you know that somebody doesn't get mad at me for you coming over. And yeah, some copy material. No, well, we is there a copier that you could use in the? church building no there is a copier that we bought under a grant already over there this is when we had to photocopy the insurance cards oh you mean those those portable copiers yes yeah. those are all stored on the shelving yeah everything's there but yeah but i think tim's talking about there's a full size yeah the, yeah professional this, one i think the I church know. owned yeah oh was it i'm pretty yeah, sure that, that, oh okay and we I'm don't sorry. know if that's going to be kept or not right i mean it's, we might it's have in the there. it's in the office room Somebody needs to determine whether I I asked. I just meant the portable one. Yeah. Right. I was talking about the copier paper, but yeah, I mean, yeah. 
will allow you two boxes of copy. Yes, paper. exactly. In the future, we'll some, in them. the next <laughs> time we have a public out. health emergency. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I be just, long, I'm sure. But it does make sense to just bring it over here and use it right Yeah, now. for sure. Otherwise, it's just yeah. going to get It'll get damp. And, yeah. It'll yeah. Get, I'll be able to use it. Yeah. All right. Well, is it 6 or 6 yeah. at 15? Okay. Um, it's 615, so I'm going to open up the sewer rate public hearing. The Deerfield Select Board, acting as the sewer commissioners, will hold a public hearing during their regular scheduled meeting on October 18th, 2023, at 615 p.m. to set the uh, fiscal 24 sewer rate. Sewer rate documents are in file for public review at the municipal offices during office hours and on the town's website. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required, where required public participation provided in accordance with in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which exceeded the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025, pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, participants intending to tape the meeting must identify themselves with their name and address for the record. Um, to join us in the Zoom meeting is toll-free 833-548-0276. And the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the pass code is 750012. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you. Did you and get that, Lily? Our lone person. Yeah. participant? Right. I think she's <laughs> I, I think I got it. Thanks. Good. <laughs> Not as fast as you, Lily. Okay. Um, for anything or yes okay. i was just going to turn it over to you trevor because you have the um has been spending a lot of we, time on this yeah we have been working um to kind of figure out what the sewer rate would be for this year uh people remember over the last several years we've been increasing the rate so that we um because because we're now closing loans and we'll start you know start paying on those loans for the sewer upgrades we need to make sure that we had sewer rate um uh, available to to pay start paying back the loans uh, for the debt service. So, um, and each year we, what we do is we look at the operational costs. Um, what does it take to run the South Deerfield plant? What does it take to run the Old Deerfield plant? You know, how much are uh, salaries and wages? Um, we have the debt service. We have indirect costs, which is you know accounting and lawyers and and different things like that that we pay for. And then um, we always need to hang on to an operational reserve, which is kind of like a uh, just money that we have to set aside to make sure that in, in case something happens, we have some money to to fund uh, fund something um, that that may break. Uh, so, uh, looking at FY twenty three, just recapping, we had uh, one million eight hundred and uh, twelve thousand five hundred ninety four dollars and forty six cents, uh, which were the usage fee. And the service fees combined, we had a total abatements. Uh, with and these abatements are generally if somebody had a leak or something like that. But these really incorporate the uh, the abatements that in, in your um, in your summer usage you only have to pay um, nothing more than one hundred and twenty five percent of your uh, winter usage. So everybody gets an abatement across the board generally if, if you've used water enough um so th those abatements totaled one uh 111,073 dollars and 57 cents um so we uh total bills were um one million seven hundred and one thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and 89 cents which it, which was about 93.9 percent of the original total um we had retained earnings um, balance of one million five hundred and four thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and seventy five cents, and so with that, we set um, last year a sewer rate of um, 
$18.84 or per thousand gallons of usage. So if you used a thousand gallons, you paid um, $18.84 on that on top of the um, hundred dollars, you know, base fee and any other hookup charges. Um, so for FY uh, 24, we're looking at salaries and wages. We have salary and wages of four hundred and thirty-five thousand three hundred and sixty-six dollars. We have an operating expenses of seven hundred and forty-two thousand seven hundred dollars. We have debt service uh, paying off the projects of eight hundred and forty-six thousand sixty-five dollars. We have indirect costs um, of forty-one thousand, and we have uh, a debt service of seventy-seven thousand six hundred dollars. Um, so that's a total. Um, we would raise by uh, user fees of one million eight hundred ninety thousand seven hundred thirty-one dollars. We we would. Um, hope to use 250000 from retained earnings. And then we have investment income that we would put towards it, which would be 2000 So the total uh, budget for uh, for the year would be uh, $2,142,731. Um, I Again, we would we would uh, do one. Yeah, I just explained where we would we would get the revenue from. Um, and then again, uh, so that that like doing nothing other than just paying our debt, running the plant as we did last year, uh, doing no other investments, we would bring the uh, sewer rate to uh, twenty dollars and ninety four cents, which would be an increase of eleven point one percent. We looked at a, a variety of different things that we wanted to work on in the in the coming year. And uh, we're trying to figure out how, how could we afford those? Um, were we going to need, need to raise the rates further to, uh, to accomplish those? And I'll just explain some of those. We have uh, planning for the old Deerfield sewer system upgrades. This is really um, a pipe that, that we need to replace. We started working on it a couple of years ago in conjunction with um, uh, Deerfield Academy. They were generous uh, and donated money to help replace the pipe and uh, line some other pipes and do some um, some manhole replacement. We still had another end of the project that, that kind of went through the fields out to the plant that's probably the worst pipe in the whole collection system. That was going to need to get done uh, as well. So the $79,516.76 is the engineering and bidding that takes to do that project. Um, and then uh, 466000 um, roughly $466,483.24 would be provided by Deerfield Academy. They had stepped up last year and said, we will, we will uh, put in for this and, and help, help the town um, take care of that pipe. It, it services everybody in Old Deerfield, but it, it, you know, it's, it's the last line into the plant. So they, they wanted to help with that. We would, they said, you pay for the engineering, we'll pay for the construction. So um, we were going to do it last year. We didn't have enough funding to get the engineering done, so we put it off a year. We're planning to move forward with that project. Um, we we felt, talking with Brenda, uh, Eric at the plant, and Kevin, that we could roll that $79,000 in, into, um, we don't need to raise the rate to do that. We have enough in our budget with retained earnings to pay for that right now. Um, and Deerfield Academy will pay the roughly $467,000 for the, for the work. Then there was um, cost for replacement of a water service. So there's also a water line that goes to that plant that's in need of replacement. It's undersized. We're going to take a hold on that for a moment until we evaluate what we're doing with the plant. Um, it was about a hundred and sixty thousand dollar budget, but we really weren't even sure if that was accurate. So we're just taking a step back and putting that project on hold for a little bit. Um, maybe tackle it next year or when we wrap it into the whole plant, tackle it then. Um, then there was, um, we were looking at different um, ways to fund uh, the, the rehab of that plant. And we looked at um, a betterment analysis for the old Deerfield plant and this was engineering. And, and um, this was about a, just about a $20,000 uh, project just under that. And we funded that um, again with retained earnings out of our current budget. Um, then there's sewer replacement on Eastern Ave Cross Street, um, which is about 18,000 and uh, 
just about 18,500, which is the engineering for that. Um, again, we've covered that in our FY24 sewer budget. And then uh, this is money that we are gonna budget you know, this year. We don't think we need to raise the rates further to cover that. And there were also two, um, two evaluations. Um, maybe back in 2017, we did a whole evaluation of our plant. It's, it's about time to do that again. So we've applied for two grants to do that for our, our culverts, uh, our collection system, and, um, and the whole sewer system again. So we've put in for two, two grants on that. This money is 3,000, I think $3,750. Those again, we can cover in the budget. So based on all of that work, we feel like we have enough in the budget. We do not need to raise the rates further than this 11.1% 11, 11 to cover what we wanna tackle this, this coming year. So we're pretty confident in saying that, um, you know, we would, you know, again, a little more discussion or see what people have to say, but we were thinking $20.94 uh, $20 would be the rate per thousand and the increase is 11.1%. We would leave it at that for the year. Um, do you have any questions, Tim? No. Um, I actually don't have any questions either, um, Trevor, because you did answer a couple that I had last, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I'm I'm fine with this. I'll entertain a motion for twenty dollars and ninety four cents. I'll make that motion. I have a question. Oh, oh please, oh, yes, really? we'd Sorry. love to hear. It. Sorry, <laughs> as, I'm, as, I'm as you're so full, I, I'm a member of the audience. Um, yeah. I'm I'm just curious about it's the same rate for both South Deerfield. Oh, sorry, yes. I'll turn up my video. Yes. Deerfield and Old Deerfield. Is that yes. Good? Yep. We're one. We're one. Uh, one district. One district. Yeah. So it's the same rate for every every user. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Um, if there's no more discussion, all those in favor? Tim Milchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. Aye. Um, so we would then. Um, Actually, we need to close the hearing and then take yeah. a vote on the rate. Yes. So um, I just wanted to make sure we weren't going to have, we had no more discussion on any of those items. No, I felt they were, you know, I was concerned and I was thinking we were going to need to raise the rate further. And we looked at other uh, other areas that, you know, by doing all this stuff, by raising the rates, but just looking at the numbers with, with Brenda and talking with our engineers and Kevin, we feel like there's enough um, that we, you know, because we raised the rate quite a bit last year in anticipation of this, you know, paying for the debt service and getting people to this spot where we weren't going to have to keep raising a ton every year. Um, we felt like we had enough to to tackle the projects we have okay. right now. All right. Um, I think we can explain that to people because I, I think people obviously are going to have, yeah. you know, concerns, but for sure. I, I feel like this is reasonable. Yeah, it's um, getting a lot done and not raising the rate, you know, right. to pay for it there. I mean, there is work the happening budget. and we, I feel like we're on top of it for the first time in years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's in good. I mean, we still have a lot to do, but um, yeah, but and there's a lot stuff. of planning to do, but we're getting stuck. Right? Yeah, it is. Okay. plant's getting close to Then done. I will take a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second. second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Um, now I'll yeah. take a uh, motion for twenty dollars and ninety four cents. I'll make that motion to no, set, second it. Yep, set the rate at all right. $20. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, Casey, was there a sewer rate thing that we had to s sign? No. What I would suggest, and it's because Sarah and I didn't have a chance to connect on it today, um, would the board be open to signing it at their convenience once I have it from Sarah? Yeah. Yes, yep. that's fine. I know. Um, so if you message. want to make a motion to that effect, I will make sure she gets that tomorrow. I saw a message from Sarah that she had requested a um, talking with the water department. She sent an email today about of the 29th of November, being able to sign the uh, commitment for the first billing. Uh, we're hoping to have it by Thanksgiving, the the readings and the report to, to get things rolling. Um, so so I'll make a motion to uh, sign the the um, 
sewer rate um, at our convenience. Once it's done, we'll stop it and sign. I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, how about, uh, why don't we do the placeholder for Larry Lot? I can't imagine that that's going to be a real issue if we do that early. Right. It's okay. not a hearing. So, well, we're waiting for John toward a lot to come in. I can, I don't have a, I don't know if I have a cell phone number. I could quick send him a, an email. Oh, he was okay. going to come in about seven o'clock to talk about it. Um, and he's bringing a couple of people with him. I'm um, someone from universal electric is coming oh, with right. him in case you have questions. Okay. So if you want to, it might be useful to do something else. Maybe talk to Lily. She's got some th things she wants to talk to you about that we need to sort of think about in terms of the town meeting guide. Tag your it, Lily. Okay. Uh, Lily, that's fine. I'm I'm not trying to make you wait. I just it was that's down for six forty five, and I didn't. That's fine. Yeah, in case somebody wanted to be here for that, I understand. Yeah. We never I, know how a hearing's going to go or how some of these items right. go. Yeah. Well, I think mostly um, <clears throat> it would be good to give you all an update, not just about St. James as well, if I can, since I have, I'm here a little early. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, uh, through Berkshire Design Group, submitted the um, ANRAD to the Conservation Commission, and um, the Conservation Commission has bounced it back to Berkshire Design saying that they require many more test pits for soil analysis. And so we, um, unfortunately, Berkshire Design Group's person is going on vacation or is there already and uh, would not be able to do it until the spring, which is just unacceptable. So we have been chasing, um, and the Senior Housing Committee is actually doing a lot of the chasing, trying to find someone else who can come and do the <clears throat> test borings for the ANRAD. Um, so that is in the works. Um, it will cost more money, which is not part of the conversation we have discussed with Berkshire Design Group because they had um, a few uh, peers and the, was it the DEP, Carolyn, um, review the work that they had done. And all of them said that it was up to par. And the Senior Housing Committee basically said, we don't care what anybody else says. We need, our Conservation Commission is requiring these. And we also want them because we're talking about Bloody Brook and it affects the whole campus and everything we're doing there. So we will uh, have to figure out the additional cost, but luckily we still have um, plenty of room in our um, approved contract money with the uh, Berkshire Design Group because we put certain tasks on hold. So, uh, we, so we're gonna be able to move forward with that. We are also, um, I expect to get within the next couple of days, the actual list of deliverables in the geothermal assessment that Berkshire Design is contracted to do. Uh, I spoke with Tim briefly and it, it seems unlikely that they will be uh, providing the kind of information that an engineer would need, but um, it would give us a good, uh, much less expensive go, no go point um, through their assessment. That's the hope. So we're working on that. Um, and then there is the St. James. Um, Lily, I, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Yeah. So please. Berkshire Design is doing both of these things, the geothermal and the uh, ANRAD? Yeah, and Berkshire Design is managing. Um, they're getting, uh, I can't remember the name of the, a, step, a different organization is doing the geothermal. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if while they're out here, they couldn't do those other holes. Um, yeah. You know, uh, since they're digging holes, they might dig several more holes and solve the problem. But that's just a thought. It is. It's a good one. Um, so I'm 
we're, we are, everybody on the committee is trying to make sure that we can reduce the burden on the town through the work being done on behalf of senior housing. And we will continue to operate that way. I just, um, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that it is like 900 feet, um, you know, the campus along um, Bloody Brook. And to have only one hole is not necessarily, uh, it might be standard or whatever, but, you know, we really want to make sure we know that the, the wetland delineation is correct. And so the Conservation Commission is really only asking for what we as a senior housing committee wanted the kind of job yes. you know, the engineers to do. So I, I have to say, Lily and I both were very disappointed. Uh, the committee was disappointed okay. with the presentation um, to the original conservation commission and then a meeting and then the continuation. So hopefully it will get done. But I right. just, again, want to point out, we're trying to get this done correctly and, and at the highest level. Right. Most stringent. And, and, and I really appreciate the Conservation Commission on this. They've done meetings beyond for us, and they're being really thorough. It's great. Yes, they've been accommodating. And as soon as we get information, we'll know whether we'll be able to continue the meeting at the end of the month or not. Yeah. So hopefully soon. Um, so the St. James purchase, um, we I, I worked on a, um, a handout for senior housing to give at town meeting that has, will have verbiage on one side and bullets that basically bulletize the verbiage on the other side. And if if you'd be so kind, I would like to, I mean, I could share my screen and show it to you or a, talk about the bullets so that if there are additional ones that you think of that would be helpful that should be added sure. and stuff like that. Okay. Do you want me to read it or share my screen? Share. Share the screen is easier. Okay. Lily, can I ask a quick question? Please. Do you want this in the guide or as a separate handout? Um, well, I was going to do a separate handout, mm -hmm. um, but uh, whatever you think is the most effective, I think. You know what I mean? Um, so this is, I'll begin with the verbiage. Maybe the thing to do is review it right now and then take the recommendation of the select board on how they think, you know. Um, <clears throat> is, is there a way to make it slightly smaller so we can see the, uh, the looks like some words are cut off. Where are they cut off? Because you're... Your faces are sticking into them. That's not my fault. That's the fault over there. <laughs> I know. Well, right. I, you know. Okay. Hang on. But if, all right. So if I do that and. Yep. Perfect. All right. Okay. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> I made your faces all disappear. Sorry. <laughs> um, do you want me to read it out loud or can you just read sure. it? Sure. I think it's good that you read it because then it's people in the audience uh, oh, that's watching that can hear it too. Okay. Um, oops. Change can be daunting, especially when it comes to our community. But let's take a closer look at this proposal to add more green space to our municipal campus and separate the senior housing development from the 1888 building development for an improved town hall. First, the opportunity to find two acres in the central village is finite, and this is a chance to make our community more beautiful and inviting for everyone. Plus, it's a great deal because the property owner is willing to accept 40,000, 40K, less than the appraised value. <clears throat> we also recognize the importance of maintaining the character of our neighborhood, and the development process includes public meetings, some of which have already happened. The best part? This won't increase our real estate taxes since the money comes from previously approved CPA funds dedicated to supporting affordable senior housing. Even better, the goal is to develop in a manner similar to Sunderland, where the senior housing development contributes to the tax base, tax base benefiting us all. In the end, this proposal aims to make our community better without putting additional financial strain on us. Let's embrace this opportunity for positive change and continue to grow while preserving what we hold dear. So that's the hoo-ha. 
bullets. So and, before you move on to the bullets, can I just ask a question? Please. Yep. Um, the um, the the penultimate verb verbiage paragraph, whatever you want to call it. Um, I wondered if when we say similar to Sunderland, um, do would it just complicate things to to say? Um, the cost of building the housing would be borne by the developer or the developer would be responsible for, you know, I don't know, maybe. Basically, well, the, point or, the, the point of this paragraph is to say that they become taxpayers. It well, was, right, does I, not I, address the cost of development. You are right. Ma'am, because bottom line is if it costs $12 million to build this housing, who's paying for it? That's, you know, I can guarantee that's going to be a question. Sure. So, um, uh, so I don't know. That's just something to think about. I, maybe just a sentence to say that the developer will bear the cost of the development at some point. One of those. You can think about it, Lily. Thanks, but um, hang on. I'm going to put it in a. All right. Um, it might actually work better in the bullets. Just yeah, yeah, whatever you think is best. But let's just see, because the the idea was the bullets summarize what happens in the verbiage, right. but there's more space in here <laughs> for me to add stuff. Um, so it's you know the more green space, enhancing our municipal campus with green space benefits the entire community. Um, limited opportunity. Finding two acres in the central village is a rare chance to create a beautiful, welcoming space for all. Uh, separation of development. By separating senior housing from the 1888 building development, we can address each project more effectively. Financial benefit. This is a great deal. The property only, owner is willing to accept 40K less than the appraised value. No tax increase. The money for this purchase, which comes from previously approved CPA funds dedicated to supporting affordable senior housing, is already in the bank. The purchase will not affect our real estate taxes. Preserving character. We value the character of our neighborhood, and this plan respects that. It's actually this process, I think, rather than the plan, because we don't have a plan, do we? No, not yet. <laughs> um, sustainable growth. The goal is to follow the model of Sunderland where senior housing contributes to the tax base and benefits the entire community. Um, and I could add a bullet about um, the the cost of development is borne by the developer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's... yeah, I think that's what people would love to hear. Okay, so I will, as you can imagine, space being the final frontier, <laughs> but I'm trying to make a handout. Um, because this will be two-sided, the verbiage will be on one side and the bullets on another. But I will fiddle with that right here and make and get it as a as a bullet because I do have more space in there. Okay. So any other? I mean, when in the CIPC meeting, Denise brought up something that is really true. I'd rather stay positive. But Denise pointed out that um, that if we don't get this and a developer does, they can do an unfriendly 40B. Um, Casey, you're muted, but I think you're agreeing with my... I am. I, <laughs> I, I had the same thought during the CIPC meeting. I mm -hmm. think maybe there's... And, and this is, I think, why you're bringing it up. How do we frame this? Yeah. So that yeah, but you could frame it by just saying you could frame it by just saying this is a for a friendly forty B, and then you just leave the unsaid thing is that what's the opposite? An unfriendly forty B. Everybody's imagination can sort that out, right? Um, are we, yeah, I have that answer. Are ready. we anticipating yeah. a can of worms that might not be opened? Um, I'm right. not really sure that you know going into. Um, I mean, we have a we have a signed agreement with the owner um, to sell the property at below assessed value. Um, I would one thing I would observe is that, um, and it's a great deal. Well, somebody's great deal is somebody else's waste of money. 
-hmm. So I would try to tweak those things to just well, speak more I, I think mm -hmm. I, you know, we're trying to show why it's a great deal. And I, I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah, no, and I was saying you can be positive by saying just the, um, the, the owner has agreed to sell um, the property for 40,000 below the assessed valuation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's what I, that, I think that's what I said <laughs> twice. You said it's a great deal. Um, I said yeah. the, this is a great deal. The property owner is willing to accept 40,000 less than the appraised right. value. I'm just saying don't don't add the great deal. Don't qualify it because like I say, some people it's not the, the next door neighbor is not going to agree with you. Yeah. But but you know what? I I will say this. Um this is senior housing putting this out. Okay, good. If it's senior housing and senior housing, I'm I'm fine with it. Let's not waste any more time okay. on it. Okay. Yeah. And but and I think um I'm gonna do as Casey suggested and and not add the the negative. Right. Yeah, please but don't. Be prepared it's not to really it. negative. We we have needs in this community. I mean, we, we're looking for all kinds of um income levels and diversity in our community, and we need space for that. So I don't think it's a negative to have affordable housing. I I agree with you, Trevor. I think that um, that there are a number of people who would not. I agree with that too. But we need, <laughs> so, to, change, we need to change people's philosophy on yeah but the, why we want people in this community of all diversities, all income levels, all needs. Yep, I agree. Yeah. But it's one to put stuff on the top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um but anyway um so is there anything else I, and the question is um do you think this is more effective as a handout or included in the um booklet i think i think it's an uh, people have a tendency to read the handout so think. if you you know pam's willing to be there early enough and every voter has the handout they will read that yeah, before the waiting. meeting yep. whereas if it's buried in the actual warrant it might get lost right that people read that as the stuff comes up yeah the, that doesn't mean we can't repeat some of this stuff but right. i think that handout is is a good idea yeah especially we're not doing a pre-meeting you know um hopefully people will see stuff and if we have questions tomorrow night i think all the select board can answer that at the spaghetti dinner. So I'm not really worried about it. All right, wonderful. Then, then I will um, add, I will wordsmith somehow to get in there uh, that the developers bear the cost of the actual building. Cause I do think that's a really good point. And so you earned your pay today, Mr. Hilchi. And <laughs> I will go away now. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. White. <laughs> I think Chris Larrabee's got the point. Put in that the builder is <laughs> yeah the cost expense. of building the housing. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. Well. Good night. Good night. Good Have night. a nice night. night. You too. Bye. All right. Next on our agenda, um, we have. Um, uh, Everyone's here for the Leary lot discussion. Oh, if you okay. want to go to that. Well, I, I would like you all to introduce yourselves. And we will talk about the $30,000 um, that we need to vote for from the ARPA funding for the conduit plan. Okay, John, go ahead. Oh, you know what, John, you're, you're still muted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. I would like to uh, introduce um, Jim Kennedy from president of Universal Electric and Dave Callahan, Senior Project Manager for Universal Electric. Um, Good Universal, evening, everyone. Good welcome. evening. Welcome. The Universal welcome. Electric will be the um, contractor hired by Eversource to install the infrastructure to both the Leary Lot, the utility infrastructure for EV charging to both the Leary Lot project and the town hall project and um the i told chris nolan and casey would give a little bit of background more than we normally would because chris is out with covid um but as chris outlined in his um one page memo the town of deerfield applied for make ready funding which 
is um, the utilities um, terminology for the infrastructure from the street to the site and all the way into the site to a small concrete pad upon which the um, EV charging stations would be sited. So the town of Deerfield applied for make ready um, funding and permission from utility from Eversource the utility. Eversource came back affirmatively. The um, the way that Eversource wanted to proceed was to first install the level two infrastructure at the Leary lot and to in also install the level two infrastructure at Town Hall, which Town Hall will only have level two. And then what Eversource wants to do is to anticipate the level three charging stations also coming in, knock on wood, if and when the town receives um, a successful result on its federal grant application. And by anticipating the level three charging at level at um, Leary lot, what Eversource would like to do is to support the town in installing the um, the like the PVC piping or like kind of like a picture kind of a white um, PVC pipe and through that pipe uh, will be installed wiring but whatever source wants to do is have the piping go in first for level three during the site construction with the level two infrastructure so that it doesn't have to come back later and disrupt the site by and install level three conduit after all the landscaping is installed, you know, the underground infrastructure, the paving, sidewalks, et cetera. Um, whatever source offered to do is to, if the town will fund the initial $30,000 conduit and also for um, essentially like um, casing for some of the, um, the infrastructure that Jim and Dave will tell you about, then Ever, then Eversource will kind of stand by and when the when the town moves forward and installs a level three station, either through the federal funding or through other funding, Eversource at that time will refund the thirty thousand dollars. And Jim Jim and Dave, could you please um and probably better than I just did, just describe the um the infrastructure that will go into Leary Lot that is budgeted for thirty thousand? Three. Yeah, so they'll be, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, there'll be two four-inch PVC conduits that will go from a, a telephone pole that will be on the, the site. It will go across to a, a concrete vault that uh, Eversource's transformer will sit on top of, and then we'll come out of that vault and go to another concrete pad that the um, the electrical cabinet would actually sit on. And then we'd come out of that pad and head down towards the chargers so that we wouldn't have to dig up any of that little uh, peninsula later on because in order to set, this vault is roughly a six by six vault, four or five feet deep. so. It, it would require a, a pretty good size hole later. And, you know, we just don't want to have to dig everything up and it would really be, um, uh, you know, just a, a real disruption to the parking lot and to that area. So hopefully we can get this in ground now and, and it's ready for the future. Um, I, I'm 100% for it, especially, I mean, if we don't get this grant, I would assume at some point we would want level three um, chargers anyway. So we're going to keep applying. And if we get the money back um, once that happens, I, I feel like this is make total sense. The last thing we want to do is dig up some, you know, we'll the, Leary, the Leary parking lot. <laughs> Just when we put yeah, a brand new parking lot. Exactly. So but, um, I, Trevor, you had a well, question. This, maybe? The 30,000 is a lot of money for conduit. So I'm just, I understand there's like the cement vault. Like, what's the cost of some of the infrastructure? Is it labor as well, or? Uh, it's oh yeah, that that's number that's including that number includes the excavator, um, the labor to install the material, the the electrical grounding for that vault. Um, okay. 
and, and also the grounding for the new cabinet. Uh, the, there'll be a concrete pad that'll have to go in for the new cabinet, which will be fed by that uh, Eversource transformer that will sit on top of that vault. Okay. So th there is quite a bit of, of labor on top of that as well. Okay. So a couple of quick questions. So the, the, the four inch conduit for the level two, what's the distance between that hole and the hole for the conduit for the level three, do they run side by side? Are they running in the same trench? Um, I, I, we can probably run them both in the same trench. Um, but the two vaults will need to be, you so, know, separate. Right. Okay. So yeah, I was just, uh, yeah, making sure that, uh, Typically, you dig one hole and you put the pipe in, and um, and then you do something else to make adjustments at the far end. So that's answered my question. Yeah. Uh, and John, this is a question that. Uh, sorry, Trevor. No, go ahead. No, go um, ahead. The um, the town has a, a a charging station near the the entrance to the where the Leary lot will be um, already. And there is a monthly fee associated with that. I assume that this is going to create another monthly fee because they're not tied together. And is there any way to, you know, short circuit that problem so that we're not paying two fees for electricity from the same company? Uh... Yeah, thank you for that question. So, um, the, I guess as we learned, um, in the update from Eversource, just in terms of um, fees, this should be quite efficient now because they've, they've updated their tariff, but I see what you're getting at. And that is that there is a, um, a fee, just like a small fee, just to have an account, right? Right. Um, and um, that's a monthly, everything else will be no demand charge, just usage. So I, I think that's a good question. I, I, I think that's a very good question to raise and to ask Eversource. Yes, we'll have two different meters, right? And then Eversource needs to have a new meter because they're applying for the, we're basically using ratepayer money for um, Deerfield's infrastructure here. So right. they need to have a new a meter and account number, but can Eversource group these together so as to remove the two customer monthly fees? And um, let's ask Eversource that question. I think yeah. it's a reasonable thing to ask for. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking that if we can, you know, reach an agreement that we can set the fee so that people will be more inclined to use the chargers because we had a high, arti artificially high fee that nobody would use except in an emergency. Um, and we want to get these fees back down to what's typical in the industry of, you know, sometimes it's as low as 20 cents a kilowatt hour mm -hmm. and, and up to like 41, 42 to 50 cents is kind of more of what you see on the highway. Um, so that we're in the process of trying to figure out what at what price point we should set the the charging so you know this would be helpful to to get an answer to that sure and um i don't have a, i don't have it in front of me like the um the you know the deerfield's bill for the you know the uh the fixed fee it's you know is it like 15 or 25 dollars a month or something like that casey uh or less yeah i think it's more i can't remember the amount yeah, I think it's more because we're tough. We have um, we've been paying for it with money that's been generated from large solar array fields, and uh, okay. it's a question that comes up on social media from folks who don't believe in EVs and and Santa Claus. So um, you know we need to be able to answer that question and put it to bed. Sure. So I guess differentiating, I think you're absolutely correct, and in, in the um... We have two. We have a couple of different types of fees. We have the um, fee to actually charge, which, which um, the good news is that now, after July, there's no demand charge. It's only monthly. It's only um, energy charges. And EverSource, I believe, in their presentation, which I don't have right in front of me, pegged that as about they they believe that a town like Deerfield would break even at twenty seven cents a kilowatt hour, I believe, and. Um, we should go back to them and say, if it has anything changed with rates or do you anticipate a rate change in the winter to just help you inform the rate that you, that you, right. um, yeah. Or kilowatt hour. 
Um, I think that's reasonable and competitive, you know? Yeah. Um, and I see where you don't want to, I know you don't want to um, shoot yourself in the foot by overpricing it and then no one uses it. That's not the point here. Right. And so I think that's a question we should ask every, every source as well. Um, and then try to reduce this, this kind of fixed fee to have an account and see if we can group these together. Yeah. So why don't, why don't we get an email together to, um, to send every source that, those couple of questions and um and then report back to you on you know what they say okay great, great. When, when do we um when do we typically hear on the make ready grant have you heard from any other towns like what what is the likelihood we're spending a ton on these chargers so i just i feel a whole lot better if you knew when. oh you have it you have the um you have the make ready grant and the paperwork is signed no, but I mean the, this one that the the level three the, from the Fed. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. So the level three, the federal grant for level three. Um, we may hear the town of Deerfield may hear as early as end of twenty three, depending on how quickly the uh, the excuse me the um, federal government moves along. It could <laughs> also definitely be the first quarter of of twenty twenty four. If I had to bet right now, I'd probably say, you know, it's more likely to be first quarter of um of 24 but i mean we pulled out all the stops the town has pulled out all the stops in terms of um writing a really good application which we helped with and chris um yeah. nolan did a nice job on and then as you know you have a letter of support from congressman mcgovern that yeah. went in one to pete Buttigieg, and then we learned that there's a federal highway administrator mr shalen bott Yep. And so there was McGovern also sent a follow-up letter directly to Mr. Bot. Right. So, and you, you just, you know, I think we've talked about this, but you kind of check all the boxes in terms of rural area, close to a highway within a mile. Yep. You, you don't have EJ communities in Deerfield per se, but you do in the surrounding towns that are within, you know, say a 15 minute drive. So, you know, Mr. Uh, Congressman McGovern, we gave him the points and he made those points in a letter too. So, Right. I mean, knock on wood. I think you're very deserving here, and you know we're hopeful. But that feel better. Yep. As the chairwoman said, you know we're not going to give up. If if we need to apply again, we will. Um, but yeah. you know, we'll let's see how it shakes out. Yep. Okay. Okay. I would um, entertain a motion to approve this. So um, I will um, make a motion to approve. 30,000 of ARPA funds for the expenditure for a refundable conduit plan or make ready for level three chargers in the Leary lot. Oh, second. Okay. If there's no further discussion, do you want any more discussion, Trev? Um, at some point, I'd just like to see a breakdown of what we spent total for the uh, chargers. For, for the chargers? Mm -hmm. um, I, th I Chris, I'm sure can get that for us. But uh, the I fact that really this money it. is going to come back, uh, we yeah, well, when we get the grant, <laughs> when we get a grant, or at some point. But uh, it makes sense. I don't want to build a Leary lot and have to dig it back up. I understand it's the future. I know. I get that's where yeah. it's all going. It's just right. we really need federal money. There's I know. so much of it out there, and I know. Uh, never comes to small towns. So. Um. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I I felt like my questions were answered. Yeah, um, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah and updates. thank you for following up with that resource and seeing if we can get a better deal than than uh, mm -hmm. on the on the one charge front. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, thank we'll, you. we'll follow up on that. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Bye bye. Um, okay, so we have our presentations done. Before we just get into the um, town meeting warrant, I uh, is there any select board announcements? I I do want to talk about the roads for two seconds. Um, just had first meeting of this um, school committee the other night, which was really great to see everybody there again and see where they're at, what they're working on. Really great stuff. It's been away for a while, but. 
it's amazing to see where that committee has gone and what they're working on and the administration's doing a great job and it's looking forward to reporting back more information and being a tie-in between the select board of the town and the school committee in the future. Um, just uh, looking forward to um, Eagle Brook being, uh, getting, moving on the, the fellowship hall project that they're uh, going to do for the residents of Deerfield that they're expecting to start Monday. Um, they're wrapping up the last bit of, I guess they're interviewing contractors for various parts of the project. And um, when they've awarded contracts, you know, they will, uh, they will uh, have already proceeded on clearing out the space and so forth. So it's good news. So it is. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. The library, I just want also want to mention the library is doing a, um, I want to say it's the 27th. They're doing a Halloween kind of party at uh, Plump Plump Farm to, is a fundraiser for the library. So people can get tickets for that. Um, should be pretty fun. Dress up as your favorite, you know, character from a book or a movie and um, have some good food and should be a good time. It's on Friday the 27th. Uh, I think it's at 6 p.m., but I'm not, I'm not positive of the time, but um, get your tickets. Come have some fun. Um, I just wanted to talk about the roads for a minute, um, there seems there still seems to be some confusion. So um, I think it's important to understand that the storms in July, there was a July 10th storm, Ashfield, um, Chesterfield, Heath, Conway, Deerfield, Leverett, Shelburne, Wendell, and Adams had um, a loss. Uh, and ours at that point was a million two. Then in, um, the July 21st storm, it was just really Conway, Deerfield and Greenfield. It was just hoovered over us. Um, and then there was in the 16th, between the 10th and the 21st, there was additional rain and that was just Gill. Um, in August, there was North Andover and then September 11th, there was um, Lemonster and Fitchburg. So these are the towns that were working together to um, try to make sure that there is some kind of um, amount of money. And we're, it looks like it's around 20 million. And, and for our July 21st storm, the, it, we have uh, 4.7 million in um, immediate repairs. So, so combined, we have 5.9 million in damages that need immediate repair. This is not um, this is not totally fixed or restored, or um, there are over thirty nine sites that um, plus additional little washouts all over the place. So we're looking at about twenty million, as far as I can tell, so far, um, and in total for a bill to go forward to ask the legislature to reimburse us for immediate costs, money that we are already spending, just to stabilize and open the roads. We have, as town of Deerfield, additional 10 or so million dollars, roughly, that we are applying for grants, or will be in the process applying for grants, to fix entirely the roads that were damaged. An example would be um, next Tuesday, we have a meeting to um, fi finalize some of the um, application for the brick grant for Pine Nook Road. We obviously invested almost a million dollars into Pine Nook Road, but there is more than a million dollars worth of work still to do. Still um, to do on the sewer. And, and that's the kind of thing that um, people have to realize that long-term, three to five years is the additional money that we will be working with and working on, uh, but that will not be taxpayer money. That is money that we anticipate getting grants for. Um, we're working very hard to put us in a situation where we will receive those grants. Um, I did have some additional good news on River Road. Um, I sit on Homeland Security and have made friends over the years with 
the president of the Mass Highway, I mean, president of the Highway Association departments. And um, he now has worked for, went to work for Mass DOT. And he came out and looked at River Road. And it's complicated, as he said, but um, he's hopefully going to get us some help through Mass DOT engineering to come up with some kind of solution moving forward. So I'm really excited about that. Um, his initial assessment was very po was much more positive rather than we have to close the road kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the reason why it's complicated because any distance over a hundred feet, even if you fix it in an emergency, you must file a um, Army Corps engineer um, permit within 30 days. So even if you wanted to dump rock, you still have to justify mm -hmm. um, dumping rock. And we are not going to jump, dump rock just to dump rock. So um, I feel very positive about this. And, and um, there's infrastructure um, money set aside, 25 million set aside for communities under 20, uh, under 10,000. So I feel like we'll have that pot of money set aside. There's another 100 million in general that's going to be for roads improvements. So we'll apply for both of those pots of money and hopefully we'll get something. But if we can get an estimate of a game plan that will get us through the door you know, for a couple of different grants without costing us a lot of money, that's going to be huge. Yeah. Um, if we apply for the mass works, which I was hoping to do next, you know, that's a two years out and you actually have to have an engineering um, estimate, which is very expensive mm -hmm. because that's again, complicated. complicated. So this gives us a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of time. I'm so much relieved mm -hmm. after having Chris come Good out work. here and um, I'm very excited. So Great. I just wanted people to understand that a little bit more. Thank you. It's good. Good update. Okay. All right. So moving on, Board of Health issues. Um, obviously, people are aware that we had um, West Nile disease um, in one of our mosquitoes that was trapped. So it's um, doing fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DPH is done testing, but the mosquito season is not over. So please just don't forget your D. Okay. Yeah, we'll we're get long. Some frost coming up pretty. Yeah, quickly, but... well, hopefully next week we'll have some enough frost to kill it off. There's definitely less mosquitoes out there, but they're, they're still out right. there, and they potentially are circulating. One good thing is, um, uh, DPH will be paying for a pilot for, um, looking for manure crips once we get the water down level down in Old Deerfield. Um, that that's going to be a really exciting thing. So, yep. um, that's the, the mosquito that carries a triple E, which we really have to worry about for next year. So if we have those mosquitoes identified and eliminated, I think that's going to be exciting. So moving on, um, special town meeting warrant and motions now, Casey. So one quick thing oh, I just sure. want to say, um, I will, uh, say that positive news um in my morning walk i go by the uh, the swamp that was eating um mm -hmm. northerly end of uh old main street it's gone down quite a bit um because uh of the work that uh that the conservation see. commission approved for, on an emergency basis um the you can see the grass that's been buried in silt uh, so that's a big positive uh, for breeding grounds of mosquitoes shrinking Yes, and I um and that that's why uh DPH is willing to do this because we are taking care of this situation. Okay. Casey. Uh oh. That's me. Okay. So I just wanted to go over the special the articles, um, really the motions. I haven't finalized the guide. That's gonna be a little bit of work tomorrow. Um so essentially what I had done, I, I gave you the articles for consideration list. Does anybody have an issue with the people sort of how I've itemized what you would put, what motions you would make? 
Nope, all set. All set. Okay. I think everything looks good. I'm, yep. I'm, a, I'm really a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean I need to fix something? Uh, I don't know. I was just nope. injecting a little levity in here. <laughs> If you want me to make changes to whoever's moving a motion, uh, Carolyn had already sent me a change to have Lily do the motion for Article Six, which is the purchase of land. Mm -hmm. um, I have Denise doing the bylaw amendments, but she and I are going to meet tomorrow. Um, I don't think she necessarily has a problem, but if there's changes, it'll be in. I'll have have to update the motions. Um, <laughs> So for purposes of, and I'll let you know that both council and the moderator have reviewed them. There may be one outstanding change for the road acceptance. That's the only thing I'm aware of. I was, as soon as we finish talking, when we're done with the meeting, I'm gonna send the revisions to the motions back to council and Lisa and, or back to council and the moderator and see what they, see if there's anything they say. But essentially you've got the funding motions. One is for a prior year bill. Um, the next one is for the MVP. And what I will do in the motions, I'll make this change tomorrow and in the guide, put CIPC's recommendations like we do with finance committee. Um, then we've got the HVAC system for the police department. And you'll see once I put the CIPC recommendation in there, then there hopefully people see the correlation between finance and CIPC. Um, classification compensation plan, that's been recommended by the personnel board, the select board and the finance committee. Um, I don't, I will have a couple talking points on that. Um, and right now I have, Who's moving it? I can't remember who's moving it, right? I'm looking at it, but I'm, yeah. You're, do you have an issue moving that, Carolyn? No. Okay. Um, Wait. Cassie and I are gonna talk about article five. She had a question for council. So I sent it over to council. I'm gonna see if I can get the three, the three of us to meet in case there's a change. Uh, but right now I think that's, at least I think it's in a stable orbit. Uh oh, Julie has a question. Oh, Julie, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just raised my hand. Um, once CIPC reviews the articles that say finance committee approves pending CIPC, you can take out that pending CIPC business. Okay. I and will just say and finance I'll just committee put approves. CIPC is recommend, recommended by CIPC like I do with finance committee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And one th one thing I, in the um, articles for consideration list, the, you've got Trevor down as Article Eleven, and then um, when when you get to the motion, you've got me doing the motion. So oh, okay. Trevor probably we fix that. We'll end this on a high note. <laughs> oh, the uh, last the, the one. Snowbury, yeah. Snowbury Circle okay. acceptance. Sure. I mean, hold I, I don't on. I want to I want to write myself a note so I don't forget to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's just verify, Casey. You were going to have Trevor do Article 1, me do Article 2, which is the MVP grant. Yes. Uh, Tim is going to do the HVA system. Um, uh, Trevor's going to do the classification compensation plan. Mm -hmm. Tim is, despite yeah, being a cat that, person. Wait, 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 that's wait. another correction. You're right. I need to put yeah. that down it's as you, Carolyn. Carolyn. Right. Yeah. Well, it's supposed yep. to be. Wait. So you want me to do it, and not no, Trevor? No, no, no. Trevor's listed to do it, but but in in the motion, it's right in the motion. Oh, it he... says you. Yeah, I need to correct it on the articles list. Yes, please do, because Trevor yep. will do that. Um, despite Tim being um a cat person, we're gonna have him do the dog stuff. <laughs> um, Throwing if you don't want it. to, Tim, just let me know. No, he's fine. He's fine. He's joking. He um, is a cat person. You told me that. I didn't get the correlation. Sorry. <laughs> Rando comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, senior housing is going to be Lily. Um, Denise is going to do articles seven, eight, and nine. Um, I will do uh, the road borrowing question. Yep. 
And then Trevor's going to do the acceptance of Snowberry Circle and Greylock. Is yeah. That and it looks like you got to switch Trevor from the dog motion to me. Yep. I have to do that. So I will, I have a couple of notes here to get myself up to speed. I'll go back oh. and look at it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Moving on. Yep. Um, so pending anything that council corrects. Great. Um, all set. It, they should be all set. And yep. what I was going to say, Carolyn, is in terms of talking points or explanation, and this really goes for all of you, but particularly with the roads, maybe we should collaborate so I can put some notes in that you yep. want me to say. Yep. Unless you want to just take it, which is fine. I just was yep. thinking after the meeting with finance committee, it might be good to have a couple of written comments. I think we and should, I think how uh, you started today is a good way to do it. Well, it's confusing. And it, the more you listen, you, there's tons of numbers that get yeah. thrown around and it's really it's confusing. Short, yeah. Um, and basically we, the, we're asking for the village to borrow cash to pay for bills that we've already spent. We've already spent. For emergency. Yeah. Right. It's fine. Right. Okay. Um, Moving on, we, we're not going to do the library. Okay. No, I have some comments from council. Um, we haven't received Johnson Roberts review of it, but council co council's comments were, this is an AIA contract. So it generally favors the architect over the town. Um, the amendments are intended to provide protection for the town as we move into a new phase of the project. So he, Council always wants us to have stronger protections for the town. He wants to see what Johnson Roberts comes back with. And I checked my email this morning and I haven't seen anything. So I may reach out to uh, Dan Pilata, but it depends on how much work happens, needs to happen because of town meeting, because um, we're short staffed. Okay. Um, special legislation, Bonnie anticipation note. Um, okay. What do you so, want to talk about? I had a meeting with Rep Blay and um, Senator Comerford and their staff on Monday, and they, I actually, Natalie came down and picked up the documentation. We're probably going to have to print out more and have Trevor sign a couple of things because we need attestations. Mm -hmm. But I reached out this morning to, or this afternoon to Corinne, who works for Natalie, and asked if we could meet with her. And I want Brenda and I to talk to her for a few minutes because we need to speed it up. Um, initially, I had the wrong timeline, so I wanna make sure that they know that, um, but they were really, really helpful. I have to say, I can't give them enough credit. They're so amazing. They help us anytime we ask, and they realize that this is a critical thing for the town. So I think we're in decent shape. I'm not 100% sure how long it's gonna take, which is the other thing I wanted to talk to Corinne around. Corinne about so I'll keep you up to date. Um, EMS. The EMS South County EMS uh, lease extension. Case. So the lease extension, the boo is going to talk about that tomorrow night. Um, Jeff Kravitz and I have both reached out to Tim Tim Drumgoole about it. Um, I was a little confused, and maybe Tim Hilchy can fill the blanks in for me. I think at one point they may have talked about having a longer lease. Um, but right now, I think five years is what we can sign. Right. But five so, years. So uh, we, we only yeah. can sign a five year lease max. Right. Right. And you've got, you've got, um, by law, legislative right. body approval to sign a five year document or a five year right. contract. Right. Yes. Um, I don't know where the conversation comes from with the boo. Um, so basically I asked Tim to keep me, Tim Drumgold to keep me updated, but Jeff and Brian, my counterparts in Sunderland and Waitley also need to know because we all need to coordinate the renewal of it. And so there was, after we drafted the renewal document, all of a sudden there were a lot of questions. So we'll see, Tim, Tim will let me know what's going on. Um, can you, um, did you get solve that question of us being able to be the uh, yeah. the lease or 
and signing the extension of the contract? I don't think it's an issue. I did reach out to council and ask that question. I don't think it's an issue because you're signing into, but you're, you're actually, we are the, the owner of the property. So somebody has to sign on behalf of the owner. Um, yeah, I mean, the Fred, it may have been a familiarity question. Maybe Tim could Fred, Fred better. question that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was uh, Fred. Is it Barton? Yeah, I think yeah. It was, yeah. Fred Barton, who's the select board in Wait. uh, Waitley. Um, he was the one that raised the question because he, he had a brain cell from his uh, contract law days fire off. And, uh, and I said, it's kind of like uh, if all parties agree that a real estate agent can represent the buyer and the seller, it's all OK. And he checked with counsel for his town and they said, yeah, this is fine. Um, and so he's calm with that. So I think I think the any any objection in the boo is is non-existent now. now. OK, Great. I just want I knew about that. OK, um, moving on. Estimated 2025 tax bills. Um, Casey, did you look into how we get that happen? So I have, and Chuck Shattuck and I have had a bunch of emails back and forth, and I've talked to Karen as well. Um, really, we need a faster response from Patriot. Unfortunately, Patriot is, is experiencing some of the similar issues as what we've seen in terms of hiring staff. So they've had a lot, they've had turnover, I think, is how it was framed to me. Um, Karen did reach out to them and ask them to, to expedite. Um, but they can only go as fast as they can go. So really, I don't think we're going to be able to accelerate the tax setting process. Um, I do know that Karen is, is keeping in close contact with the districts to see where they are. Um, I believe the fire district, South Deerfield fire is all set. Um, and I think Old Deerfield's fi Old Deerfield fire is working, Trish, I think. Mm -hmm. I remember her face, but I don't remember her name. Trish um, Tr Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I don't know. I know that Karen's been keeping in touch with South Deerfield Water. So what we've been trying to do is just update me is really the question I have when I see anybody. And so okay. at some point, I think the assessors would like to have a conversation with you guys. And I know the question of preliminary um, semi-annual tax bills has come up. I don't know what the answer is. I haven't actually been able to reach out to council. Well, don't worry about it until after town meeting, but yeah, we've got to, we've got to get through this first, but it's really, I know that other towns do it. I just don't know the mechanism. Well, I know, it, I know it can be done. It makes total sense. And I think that would be one way to help out our cash flow. Mm -hmm. So we've, I think there is consensus that we do want to move forward with that. Okay. Uh, I know Berniston from my, from my mom, they, they've they been doing estimated tax bills for years. So if Berniston can do it, I'm sure we can. So um, I, I think we should do that. Um, okay, we um, we did confirm the vote mm -hmm. um, for the October 16th meeting, emergency meeting. Yep. No letters of support tonight. Um, appointments, um, I have three appointments. There's only one listed here, but um, Kathy Sylvester sent a letter of interest in to be appointed to the Senior Housing Committee. Um, She's already come to um, senior housing meetings, and she is uh, Anna Lee resigned because she, uh, from the Planning Board and the Senior Housing Committee because um, of personal reasons. And uh, Kathy is on the Planning Board. It would be a wonderful addition. I'll make a, a motion to appoint Kathy Sylvester to the Senior Housing Committee. No second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much for your service, Kathy. That's good. Yeah, I know. I'm, I have That's to say out. I'm pretty excited to have yep. it on board great. Uh, to our Senior Housing Committee. Uh, Pete Law has volunteered for the CCI Committee. Yep. Um, yes. Don't you think CONCOM needs to appoint him? He's coming from their committee, right? He, right. Yeah, he, he's the chair. He's the, the chair. They will probably uh, think they're having a meeting on the twenty sixth, mm -hmm. but he... so they'll just appoint, appoint yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I was wondering when I saw. I, there was an I saw an email, Carolyn, and I wondered when I thought about it. I thought, well, maybe Concom should appoint him to CCI since it's really that connection. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, can you just send him an email, Casey? That I will either talk, maybe I'll just shoot Amy and him an email. That yeah. way yeah. she can put so, it on the agenda. So it's the, on the, yeah, I just want to make sure it's on the agenda because we want him on for the next CCI meeting. Okay. When's your next CCI meeting? Uh, okay. Not until November, so yeah. it's fine. Okay. Um, and then CCS Winsky had um, uh, um, sent an application in for the MVP committee. CC? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for the 2.0. They're looking. So they're looking I thought we were holding off on some of these appointments until we had, and, and this is me not having been to all the meetings, but I think Chris Curtis and Chris Nolan had talked about holding off on that oh, appointment. Then we can, as long as we don't, I don't want to lose her. Yeah, we don't want to lose her. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I think there's a couple of steps we need to get to. Unfortunately, I wasn't involved in the conversation, so I would just ask maybe that we hold off until maybe the next meeting. I, don't I just yeah. want to make sure we don't lose yeah. the opportunity to because be we had talked about adding students to yeah. the 2.0 has to expand. So um, she filled out too. she filled out our interest application. Good. So yeah, that's great. Um, then you have a tentative alternate building inspector we don't have confirmation but the building commissioner has reached out he's got somebody interested yeah uh, okay. when the two of them have had a chance to make sure everything's coordinated we'll get an Perfect. email from bob that's awesome him. okay thank you and thank Perfect. him for that work i will i have <laughs> great i know um the mail we have is um from ma on the solar tracker do you want to just um Talk about that, Casey. Basically, and and I tried to catch as much mail as I could, um, but this one was key because she had said something at the last meeting about the solar tracker, and I actually got a phone call from the coordinator in Gill. So what she did was she outlined in that email information about the solar tracker, um, mm -hmm. and I don't, hold on a second, I'll open it so that I have the email. Um, I guess my question to the board is, do we want do we really want it? Yeah, because I'm not sure exactly. I first of all, I think we need I sent this to Kevin. So he has a I'll see if I can get a chance to talk to him, but it may not be until after a town meeting. Um, I don't I honestly don't know how to parse it. So maybe Tim can help me. But in but terms of what we would get and how much it would cost it really placement is a key piece of this. Well, we had thought maybe the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. What do you think, Tim? I mean, bottom line is uh, there. there's a couple of things going on. Um, I ended up calling New Pro's lead, uh, general counsel. Um, she outlined a couple of things that uh, involved potential land transfer, sale of town-owned property to New Pro, et cetera. So I said, well, look, all this really needs to go to our town council. Right. And I, have since given her Lisa's um, direct email and had to reach out. I don't know if I CC'd you, Casey, if I didn't, I apologize on the e initial email to introduce them um, because obviously we, you know, we have to go through a whole process. And um, this seems to me like a, a good, if we get it free, um, there was some throat clearing when I said this to the council Look, you're gonna you're gonna throw this out if you don't give it away, and we're not gonna buy it to you if you're gonna throw it out. Um, and there is this solar store company that has installed this system at this person's house. Um, turns out there's a piece of equipment associated with it that is no longer up to code. So there's some there's some related issues. But if we're talking about a ten thousand expense to get a solar tracker that's worth Fifteen or six, or fifty or sixty thousand dollars, functioning in a location like the south, you know, some somewhere down in the south, south here for the wastewater treatment plants, that's going to put in, you know, twelve kilowatt hours of, uh, or fourteen kilowatt hours a year in, in electricity. It would be a good thing. Now, the question is, you know, do we know enough about this, uh, you know, to to say yes? I mean, it seems to me to make sense, but. You know, others may have different opinion about it. Uh, for me, I would just want to talk to Eric about yeah. where where we would right. site there. That is, it makes sense mm -hmm. anywhere on that property. The other thought I had is Old Deerfield because that one 
doesn't work because of the angle. It'd be yeah. nice to put it up there and maybe fund that plant. Is it, yeah, and is it worth, like, how much electricity do we generate, and is it worth it? Right. Well, I don't know any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I... How, how about if we just have it? consensus that um, we think it's a good idea for either Storage sewer treatment, at the, at the to defray the cost of operating our sewer treatment plants. As sewer commissioners, we would have you be the point person to see which site would benefit the most mm -hmm. and is it worth it and right. then How you make that save. yeah and then you make that decision yeah i mean okay. it, according to the uh, pr the information provided by the company that installed it it yeah. pr produces 12 megawatts a year of okay. power um it doesn't seem like it wide because it's it's only got eight large panels but it, since it tracks the sun right. and it's gets the right efficient. angle it's much more efficient so whether 12 megawatts would make a difference to, um, you know, the energy bills at the sewer plant, I don't know. Right. Um, but Eric I, definitely needs to be consulted. So, yeah. Let's yeah. ask and see what, see, what, yeah. see what we can find out. And okay. fortunately, because there are so many other issues involved, um, you know, this is not going to be removed until the land sale question is resolved. Right. So, so we got a little time. Okay. Um, Casey, you're aware of that land sale, right? And we're talking about there's a, there's a, BPW wow. shed behind the house. I know. And so that needs to be a bigger conversation because Kevin and I haven't had a chance to talk about that. And we have I, to get town meeting to give us permission. We right. talked about that right. before too. And that, you know, when I was first approached by the contractor and they, you know, what Newpro wanted to do was build a shed for us so that we could put all our stuff in it. But I, I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think they can do that like legally. So there's got to be a Lawyers have to talk. I right. Think yeah, exactly. Said, That's yeah. why I said general but counsel done. talk to our lawyer because yeah. this is a process. It's a you know yeah. it's a land sale essentially. Right. Well, we and also have a place have to have a place to put everything that's stored in there. Right. Right. Exactly. That's so, a bigger problem. Yeah. That's why yeah. Kevin and I need to talk about yeah. it too. And yeah, that's yeah. definitely. And uh, the contractor never approached me about it. Right. Yeah. And what he was what was us. what was happening was that. The contractor was talking to the DPW, yep. and none of the, you know the contractor and the DPW have no ability to make any decisions for New Pro or the town. Right. So that's why I wanted to escalate it to attorneys. town town attorneys. Yep. And and again, let me reiterate: if I didn't include you on the email, I apologize for that. All right. Um. So there is consensus, and then will Trevor, you just be the one that. Looks well, I'll need there. Tim's help because yeah. I'll, I don't yeah, it know doesn't matter. About, so, yeah, so, I, I'm happy to. Yeah, we can talk to Eric. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or maybe there's we, somewhere else. But we know, certainly, we're certainly right, exactly. But we're yeah. certainly interested. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Good. Um, that's enough for you, Casey. Right? Yeah, that's enough for me. Um, I did want to go back. There's something in the appointments, the placeholder, uh, for. Policy, employment policies and stuff, and that's the town clerk office reorganization. Oh, okay. Okay. And Sorry. For some reason, my hand is up. <laughs> okay. I guess I, I raised my hand without realizing it. Um, um, so I just wanted to go over that memo. Um, okay. Essentially, we are requesting, we meaning basically management staff here. Okay. Myself, Brenda, and Chris Nolan we're requesting that the board consider reorganizing the department and within the bounds of the budget, um, having a full-time town clerk and a part-time assistant clerk. And the reason we're requesting it is it's incredibly difficult to hire. And if we did do a reorganization of this nature, it would allow us to be more competitive and to find a clerk, but essentially the market is just the, high, the employment market is so tight because so many clerks have retired or left positions. And a lot of that has to do with some of the major changes you've seen in the last four years um, for with various laws and various things that town clerks have to do. Um, so we developed this proposal and I took it to the personnel board on Monday um, and they endorsed it. Essentially, it would what we would have to do is make some reductions in the assistant town clerk's hours to 10 to 15 hours a week, um, have a full time 40 hour a week clerk and town clerk and manage the budget in a different manner. And so what I did, if you look at the memo, you'll see that there's 
different propose there's different ways to handle it but if there's if the assistant town clerk position change grade change isn't approved for town by town meeting then there's a breakdown and you can see how much it would cost the town it's well within the budget that was approved in april even if we have the change where the the position the assistant town clerk's position is regraded um, we also have the ability to stay within budget um, for this fiscal year um, really it would allow us to make the town more marketable meet the needs of the town because we know that there's going to be a lot of escalation in work next year, particularly yeah. for yeah, or through the elections. Issue. But essentially, we're seeing and and watching somebody experience a a, lo a workload that has changed. I think in the last four years that I've observed, four or five years I've observed town clerk work. So we're asking you to approve that so that we can move ahead and put vacancy notices out so that we can manage that. Well, I'd make a motion to approve the changes in the structure of the clerk's office based on your input along with everybody else in that office. You know, it needs to work there and I'm good. And, and I'm, I'll second it and then if there's, to see if there's discussion. Yeah. Um, I, I think since it is cheaper or saves money um, from what we budgeted, I, I mean, I'm fine with it. So if there's no more discussion, then all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, so, Casey, uh, your report. Any updates? My report. So, right now, our priority is town meeting. Um, yes. And we're putting to get, what I have to do tomorrow is take all the motions with any changes that Lisa gives us and put together the guide. And that's going to require some talking points. So I may reach out to you guys individually if there's something I need. I will revise the articles list so that it matches what the motions say. Um, that request for special legislation to validate the 2022 election is out there. Like I said, I will follow up um, and I want to follow up with Brenda and she and I talked about that. Um, the flood mitigation where we I'm waiting for updates from Kevin. I haven't been able to talk to Kevin over the past two days. Um, but I wanted, we have to follow up with bond council in the event that the borrowing question passes at town meeting, the select board has to call an election. And I went back and I looked at my schedule and I'm wondering, cause we need to post no matter what we would miss the posting opportunity if we waited until after town meeting. So essentially I would like to post a meeting for the select board on the 25th. Um, to address calling a special election. And I've already started working with Cassie and we'll be checking in with Lisa um, about the verbiage that we're going to need to have both to call the election and for a special election warrant. So we'll be working on that, but I'm wondering if the board would be willing to meet on the 25th so that if we are at that point, we can do it. We can always cancel a meeting if something yep. happens during. Well, our, we during our um, we scheduled at our CCI meeting. We scheduled a work group um, meeting, Zoom meeting, CCI work group meetings about um, membership and updating what our um, the CCI. So that's what time a, we have a we have a time frame we have to hit. To right. So that's election. at six o'clock. But if you want to do this. At like 5.30? 6.30. Oh, you think we're only going to spend a half an hour? No, it says 6.30. But oh. we would if we wanted to do a half hour meeting before then. Oh, yes. But yes. we have to post this if both of us go to that meet or if all three of us go to the CCI meeting. It has to be posted as a select board meeting, right? Right. Right. So I don't know if De Denise already notified you that we're having this meeting or, or were we thinking this was a non- are you doing it as a work group? Or are you doing it as a committee? Yeah, that's what I'm. Well, I think just for, I think for clarification, it's going to be Lily will do the meeting on her Zoom account. So we do not need town hall staff, but I would like it be, to be posted so there's no confusion. So if that's at six, 
I mean, 6.30, why can't we do a six o'clock? Yeah, it's just one that's item. That's fine. I mean, it's yeah. just one item. If Trevor, if you, that's okay with that's you. That's fine. Six is fine. I know you weren't, I don't think you were planning on going to the work group. I don't, I don't know. But this just would be Zoom for a few minutes. Right. Okay. Or maybe. That's what I was going to say. Do you want it to be remote? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because the, the, the work group meeting is that is, re is all Zoom. Okay. So you want it, do you want it to be on um, Lily's account? Yes. Or do you want well, it to Lili... be a, the six o'clock meeting? Do you want it to be on our account or Lily's yeah. account? Six o'clock on our account. Okay. It has to be. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it would be two separate postings, Casey. Yeah. Or else I can just skip the 630. <laughs> <laughs> I'll skip the 630. Hey, with volunteers. Okay. That's the whole purpose of this. Is I understand, but we have stuff. limits. I know, we have I know. way too many meetings. This is my seventh meeting today. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah but you, li you like meetings, Carolyn. We no, need to I don't. slow I down. Don't. But, well, I'm just in a better mood because potentially we yeah. are working on Look at that calendar. Mm. Oh, I, I meet, therefore I am. Six grand is like that's an hour i know i like that i meet therefore i am yeah i can commiserate with that <laughs> yeah i know so the bad news is we didn't get the community one stop grant i saw that we know that because we're western massachusetts i don't uh well what what i did do and this was before chris was out i did ask chris if he could keep up and i haven't looked myself to see what how the grants were awarded mm -hmm. um what I did do is I reached out to Community One Stop and asked them for a feedback meeting. And so Denise is aware of that. And so is Alice who helped us with the grant. So I think if we can get some feedback, we can figure it out. But I also want to see who got the who got awarded the grant because it gives us an idea of what they were looking at. Um, what we did get was we received our extension for shared streets and spaces. So I let Denise and Alice know, and we'll start working on what we need, what our next steps are after town meeting. Um, and next week is kind of busy, but I did want you to know that we're working, we'll be working on that. Um, Energy Resources is probably going to pursue a meta grant, and they wanted some help from the COG. So I can, I reached out to Allison and asked her about it and she's going to reach out to David Gilbert Keith and find out because they actually had a meeting right before you were meeting at five o'clock. So they'll coordinate with Allison and she's got some money from her um, energy grant that the COG gets to help with those costs. So that's good news too. I think what they, and I'm not positive because I haven't talked to David, but I think they may want some help so that they can think about pursuing an energy resources grant next year. Um, let's see. The planning economic development coordinator and offer letter was sent out. I haven't received a response yet. Okay. Um, the SCEMS chief position interviews are next Tuesday, and that's going to be all day from 11 to 6. So normally I would have asked you to meet on the 24th right after town meeting, but I don't know how long. Yeah even That's after fun. the interviews, how long that'll go. When was the letter sent out to the planner candidate? Yesterday. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, and that's right now. That's what I have. There's other things that I've been working on, but I've really been hyper-focused on the we, special town meeting and the motions and stuff. We just lost Valerie. She was on for a minute and Valerie uh, was on. She wondered if there was anything you needed from her. If well, you I, need I, me I to reach seeing, out, I can. I keep seeing the, um, emails back and forth on our costs for our, you know, the trucks are constantly annoyed with our annual plus the 35 every day. I just feel like we need to have a meeting, a regroup on the cost for food trucks and really get this nailed down because it seems like every other week we're getting emails going, this town is crazy. Everybody else does this. So, Why are we charging so much? Well, because we we're, actually inspect it. Well, then we are fun. covering I, our costs. We're right. ahead of the game. Everyone's there may be a way to handle that. And so Valerie, Valerie and I have talked about it a couple of times. Um, it, to your point, is, Trevor, is, do you fine. want to put something on the agenda to, to well, particularly address I, it? Let's, let's take a minute, step back. I will tell you that Valerie works Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yeah. on I know. food trucks. Have, we cannot have a food, a, you know, a health agent 
coming working weekends. I, I mean, we are that. so lucky to have Valerie that doesn't matter. But are we to, needing to do the annual plus the 35, 35, 35, 35? The annual is to make sure they have all, all the stuff mm -hmm. and they yeah. have to have all the certificates. Everything comes in once it's processed. It costs us to process that paperwork. Yep. Got it. So that one fee, and then every time we inspect what people are mad about is because they don't want to be inspected and other towns do not I think inspect. they just don't want to spend the money they don't care about well, the inspection i'm i'm sorry <laughs> and i really wish that the, the head agency whoever is hiring them actually paid the bill well i mean that, we that deerfield academy uh, you know people don't need to have uh, go work at Deerfield Academy. Deerfield Academy pays to have the food trucks. Right. They pay a flat yeah. rate so the kids can just go. Right. Guess what? If people don't want, are irritated to pay our fees, then they don't need to go and do it at Deerfield Academy. Okay. It's or not Treehouse. That I'm talking about. No, talking it's about Treehouse. Maybe yeah. you know, in, in their business structure, they should fund that for their people. If they, I mean, because right. they it's don't the, have the infrastructure for it. a kitchen. Yes, it, but listen. It, it's like um, an hour and a half of an employee's pay to get a person to deliver a food truck, Yeah. Um, serve food that doesn't cost Treehouse any money to serve, Right. provide the food, et cetera. So, yeah, I agree with you. There there could be another mechanism for doing this. Right. But um, I just want to clarify that it's $35. And if you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday consecutively, it's $35. It's right. not $35 a day. I know. But right. I think and what happens is the way they schedule them, they schedule right. them here, then a week right. from now, they schedule exactly. them, then a week from so now. So maybe what we could but do is three, right. three days later, they come back and right. it, or whatever so it the is. The food truck goes from Deerfield to some someplace else. Yep. They have a problem. I don't. I don't have they any come issue back. with the amount. Yeah. I just think that the whole structure for, for whoever's getting the benefit of it should right. maybe have a discussion with their food Well, trucks. they don't pay. Valerie's here. If you'd like to have pay Valerie's here. Tax. They yeah. do not pay property tax. I just think so, somebody else should be paying. Well, that's yeah, that's a discussion that's between that's the right. contractor that's and the Right. That's between the Treehouse yeah, and, the P and the food trucks. That's that. not for us. Nope. We're covering our costs. I agree we with that. We are so fortunate to have the fantastic Valerie. I understand. I just keep seeing the email week after week after and week. To, so I just want to understand don't go there. what it is. If they don't want to work at Treehouse, yeah. then don't go. But think about how many people are there. Sure. How much money they're making. Yep. Not my, not my problem. Fine. Valerie, sorry. Hey, Valerie. We're just saying how wonderful you are because you come and work on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday doing all these food trucks and that we need to cover, we need to make enough Valerie's money. Valerie's looking like she's ready to speak. To Let's let her speak. Her she's salary. really ready to speak. Let's hear you, Valerie. Okay, so um, I only caught part of that conversation. Yes, they're not, they're not there. Most of the time, they're not there consecutively. And I sent I sent the board the list of when they're there, and like last week, week before last, there was one food truck there. There was maybe I, you can't say they're making a lot of money because no, they're not. They're really not making that much money. I mean, they're supplementing the the pizza ovens with the food trucks. And two weeks ago, it was pouring rain, and that poor girl out there. She had she was doing hot dogs. They had there was maybe 30 cars in the parking lot and everybody's inside because it was pouring rain. And yes, she paid her $150 plus her $35 to be there. I don't think she covered her costs. They are not, they are not making as much money as we think they are, yeah. or as you think they are. Well, I, I, I was talking it. about the average though, Valerie, because on a beautiful night when you have a concert. They are making lots of money. Okay. So, but it doesn't reduce our costs. You still are going down there. You're still affecting it. And so that to me has to do with what Treehouse, Treehouse is, you know, that's between them and the food trucks. They should fund it. They should, they, that's part, should be part of their, they cover their fees or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Deerfield Academy does not cover the food truck fees. Right. I had that clarified for me um, last week because I had a food truck 
at Deerfield Academy on Friday. And, and he had, the gentleman had said something. It, it was a food truck that does sliders. He had mentioned about the cost. And I said, well, does Deerfield Academy cover your cost? And he said, no, they don't. No, but what they do do is they pay the person to be there and cover the costs of whatever, you know, so the kids don't have to pay. They just go up, walk up and, and so whatever that, rate is set for, for whatever the fee is that, right. should, I mean, that's again, between the contractors and Deerfield Academy to fund those vendors. They okay, are so for that, truck so for that, because so that's, for that cheaper, one year, that's cheaper than keeping the dining hall open. So again, we that's that's a business model for them as it is treehouse whereas we need to cover our costs of you going there and doing the inspection okay. we can't afford to have the food trucks have any problems because a foodborne investigation and any problems will cost us a lot of money okay so you're still so going I, excuse me i said you're still going to both locations and those Issues. Yeah, I, I actually, I, there's three locations. Um, the Berkshire Mountain or Berkshire Brewery is also has a couple events coming up as well. So I'll be going there. And when 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 the food trucks complain about the price, I I just tell them I don't set the fees. If you have an issue, you need to talk to the board, and I throw it back on you guys, and you guys can talk to them Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. And I will yep. tell you that Julie Chalfon is is even though she's off the camera there, she's looking right at us and saying, cover your costs. And so I'm saying, yes, we have to cover our costs. 35 is not, an, I mean, when you go and do a food truck construction, I mean, inspection, you're driving down, you're, you're, you're spending a few minutes, you're filling out the paperwork, and then you're driving home. We have to pay you. And we, have, and we are so lucky to have you and that we need to cover our costs. I don't, okay, I don't... so like I said, when when the food truck people complain about the price, I just tell them to talk to the board. Yeah, and I don't set the fees. And they yeah. should negotiate with their host. You know, the host should pay the fee. If they, they want somebody that they're doing the food and they don't want to invest in the kitchen or whatever it might be, I, I, I don't know. I just think that somebody's making money. And if they want to bring that kind of service into it and we have the cost to inspect that we can't change that, then there maybe sh there should be a negotiation between the food truck and whoever's hosting them. Yes. And maybe we can write a paragraph for you to give them when they complain, say the select board of the town of Deerfield has fixed costs that they have to cover. Talk to the person you're contracting with to, to provide food services at their location yeah. and ask them to cover the $35 fee for every four day period where we're here or whatever. I mean, somebody has got to pay because yeah, I mean the, the, the poor folks are coming here and asking for relief and we're telling them we don't have an ability to give you a relief. We don't um, because we have to pay for the whole inspections. I, I know that when we go to the finance committee, we are saying we're generating this amount of money and this is how much we need to cover your hours. And we don't, we don't have wiggle room already. So for for us to negotiate the price down just because they're complaining about it, too bad. You're doing the job that we want you to do. And right. I, I can't, uh, it doesn't matter what other towns are doing. Right. Did, did, did you see the list that I sent you? Um, I emailed it to the board, the list yeah, that yeah. they've given me. Um, that They gave that to me about two weeks ago with the food trucks into the food trucks that they've already contracted with up until new year's eve yeah at, at new year's house. eve i i find it amazing that they're going to have food trucks there in the winter but we'll see how that pans out yeah well and again i mean having you go and verify the temperatures are being correct and stuff like that i mean that's huge especially yeah, you do a great job i i mean valerie thank you so much to have someone work on the weekends like that is really tough mm. yeah I, I don't mind like i said i don't mind doing the weekend work i don't have small children i don't have to go <laughs> to um sports games or any of yeah. that anymore and you know that's it's fine for me that well, we appreciate it well we are really appreciative and i'm so sorry that 
you're getting the grief, but just just blame it on us. Yeah, I, I think that's a good okay. idea. Okay, maybe just. Yeah, uh, and I like that idea. Better. I think it was Tim that said that they yes. had would do a, a paragraph out. That would be an excellent thing. And here's our. If you could do that, email it to me. I'll bring it with me. So if somebody does complain, yeah, it's actually only one. It's only just a couple of people yeah. that have complained about it. Right. And yeah. there is a new one. Um, I just, I forwarded you the email or I included you yep. in the email. Um, I forgot what, I think her first name might've been Melinda. Yeah. Uh, she has two food trucks coming and they're also closing their pizza kitchen. Um, they're right. closing their, their kitchen and they're expanding. Right. Expanding the kitchen. That's, that's right. So the why they're doing that, they're bringing in more food trucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, again, yeah, I don't know what the attraction is. I, I really don't, but whatever. Because there's no concerts there now, so why would people go there? Yeah. Well, the they beer. like their beer. They like their beer. When they drink their beer, they get hungry. And then, it's a great place to go. And, that's, that's and then once they eat their cool. pizza, it's salty, so then they drink some more beer. That's right. Oh, sure. Even, yeah. There's salt on the beer. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Valerie. Okay, you're welcome. I just saw you on. I wanted to kind of because I saw the emails come, and I, I keep forgetting to bring it up. I just want yeah. to have that discussion so we can flush that out. I think that's a great idea, Tim. Where we to put a well, yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Are Are we moving ahead, um, Casey, on the job posting and stuff? Yep. Okay. You talked to Valerie about that. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. A motion okay. Concern? Anything else, Valerie? No, nope, but I think that's it for me. Thanks Thank for all you. Your I work. just saw that I was on the. I was saw that I was on the bottom of the agenda, so I thought well, maybe I better get. Yeah. Um, no. No. I'm we're, glad we're you're just, here. Just always feel free to pop in. Yeah. Anytime. Okay. Sounds good. good. All right. Thank Thank you, good night. Good night. Bye. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Oh, here. <laughs> what am I running the running the meeting now? <laughs> no, I just want to get it over with. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> all right. All those in favor. To Milchi I. Trevor McDaniel I. Carolyn Nessai. <laughs>